Good evening. This is Robert Face for Radio Ricks broadcasting from the National Weather Service Forecast Office in Slidell, Louisiana. We have uh, quite a bit of severe weather uh, expected to head our way for the next couple of days, and uh, it's going to be quite busy from a weather standpoint. Um, so let's just get into it because there is quite a bit to discuss. Uh, we already do have some um, watches and advisories up already, uh, so uh, we'll go over those. Uh, and then we'll definitely hit hard on the, on the, the impacts that we're expecting, uh, say, Friday evening, Friday night into Saturday. So right now we do have, uh, we're looking at severe thunderstorms possible late Friday night. Uh, and that's an unfortunate time having any kind of severe weather coming through while most folks are sleeping. Uh, you, please, you know, take this very seriously because this is uh, on a scale of most of our severe weather events. This is a rather big deal uh, that we're looking to have. We, we do have a, uh, we're going to be going into a uh, enhanced risk and that might even be upgraded at some point in time over the next day or so for our immediate area. So uh, that's that's for Saturday. So right now, uh, just focus on the fact that we are looking at a, a period of inclement weather uh, with severe thunderstorms highly likely to occur uh, with this next system coming through. And that will continue into Saturday, probably early afternoon before it gets out of our area, east of our area and moves into uh, Alabama. So we're looking at, um, you know, several hours, say a period of about 10 to 12 hours of inclement weather rolling through. Uh, we are looking at tornado threat. Uh, that is, a, um, in this case, we're looking at a lot of low-level winds that are going to be in the 50 to 75 mile an hour range uh, right off the surface and slightly just above the surface, say above the tree, tree, tree lines and moving on up to a few thousand feet up in the atmosphere. And usually when that occurs, that's, and any tornadoes that do develop, they will be moving really fast, uh, almost like interstate speeds uh, with, with any tracks that do, uh, tornadoes that do develop. They also will have the capability of being long track, meaning they can uh, stay uh, a, a formative tornado for quite a long time over many miles uh, instead of the touch, touch and lift again uh, type bouncing types that we typically see around here. Uh, these can be rather large and stay on the ground for quite some time. Uh, so that is a, a main concern. Uh, we're also looking at damaging wind potential that could be on the order of say 70 miles an hour or higher. Uh, we are looking at a very potent uh, squall line perhaps developing ahead of this uh, frontal system. And with that, the winds, uh, with that wind aloft just off the surface, it wouldn't take much to bring it down to the surface to produce some damaging winds. And then we rarely see too much hail around here, but in this case, uh, the, the dynamics is such to where we can get some hail production out of it. Say some hail that may be on the order of about the size of a quarter uh, to maybe half dollar size as far as uh, sizes go. And then uh, periods of heavy rainfall, I would say right now that's probably the lesser of the four threats, but um, we can have some localized heavy rain that may cause some ponding of water in some locations. Uh, so currently we also have a wind advisory that's going to be in effect for tomorrow. Uh, that's mainly due to these strong non-thunderstorm winds that's going to be throughout the day and, and heading into Saturday. And then the coastal flood advisory, because of these stronger winds that's coming off the Gulf of Mexico, it will be piling up the water along the east facing shores. And at high tide, you will see some uh, some minor inundation of water uh, trickling in on these low-lying areas near the coast and around the, the uh, tidal lakes and in the bays. So we'll look at that a little bit in, in, in depth. Uh, looking at the threat levels right now, it's kind of hard to determine one greater threat over the other, at least for damaging winds, tornadoes, and hail, because uh, given the potency of the system that we're expected to roll through, uh, I would think right now that you all have equally chance of being a moderate th uh, threat. And then flash flooding, perhaps slightly a less threat for that. Uh, but again, we're not totally off the hook for the flash flooding threat, but uh, the greater threat we think may be further north. And we'll look at that on the map uh, towards the end. Confidence right now, uh, slightly higher than normal, um, only because um, it, it does appear like we're going to get under the, the main bang of the, the main dynamics to cause this severe weather potential. Uh, so the, the confidence is high on that. If there is a somewhat uh, issue that may come into play as far as damping down a threat, Annie, it would be the timing. Uh, the models are kind of uh, divided on which, 
you know, one's faster than the other and, it's, uh, and things like that. So the timing issues may mean maybe a couple of hours difference or, you know, as many as maybe four hours difference as far as arrival times. But we're trying to uh, smooth that out for you and we'll, we'll go over some timing uh, here on a graphic as well. But right now, uh, the, th the confidence is pretty decent considering it's still a day or, you know, day and a half to two days out. So looking at our current situation, we do have several advisories already in effect. The coastal flood advisory is already up uh, to get these next couple of high tide cycles that will be coming through. And over the next two days, you will see the water creeping up if you live near the coast. And if that impacts your, um, say, your access to these areas, if you know you live in a low-lying area where the road, the access road may uh, briefly go under and make it difficult to uh, navigate or, or to, to maneuver around your area, then by all means, do whatever you have to do to you know, to, to remedy that. And we're also looking at wind advisory that will be in effect. And this is not from the thunderstorm winds. This will be the straight line winds that comes on off the Gulf. Uh, we're looking at on the order of, say, 25 to 30 miles an hour at times, and perhaps gusts higher, maybe closer to 40 miles an hour. And this is just the regular winds, not associated with any kind of thunderstorms. Uh, when the thunderstorms do roll through, however, those wind gusts will probably be doubled in that ma magnitude once uh, they, they kick in. And once again, the tide's one to two feet above normal. And then we also, in the interim, as far as the river situation overall, a lot of the rivers in the area can handle some rainfall, but we do have a high flow going on currently uh, on the Pearl River. It is in flood. And uh, so that river basin cannot really stand much more rainfall in it. And there's also a flood crest working down the Mississippi River with a, uh, with a flood forecast issued for Red River Landing at this time. And that's probably going to be working down the basin as well over the uh, next week or so. So looking at the uh, outlooks, this is from the Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma. And the greens, the darker green is a marginal risk. The yellows is a slight risk just getting in, impinging into our western part of our service area. Uh, basically, west of uh, Macomb, the Baton Rouge line will be in a slight risk. And this is the overnight hours we were talking about. This will be mainly say from three four o'clock in the morning through sunrise uh the the squall line and any tornadic thunderstorms that may develop out ahead of the squall line would most likely occur that would be in the pre-dawn hours and the early very early morning hours um on saturday going into saturday and the threat is somewhat less as you get further east only because the system has not quite gotten here yet but by the time we do get to saturday you can see the the whole area our whole service area that's uh, embedded within that, that black outline is uh, you can see clearly is in the enhanced range and would not be too surprised if in subsequent updates from the storm prediction center if they don't upgrade maybe portions of this area to even a moderate risk uh, so that remains to be seen but you know, suffice to say we are looking at uh, significant impacts in the area uh, just with it, with it, despite whatever the category may be uh, so we're looking at enhanced threat for severe the storm Saturday morning and that will, again, be coming in from the west across the Atchafalaya Basin. And then as we get into the lighter part of the morning, uh, that will be moving, say, east of I-55 over to the Pearl River Basin area. And then early afternoon hours get pushing into the Mississippi Gulf Coast and the extreme lower part of uh, southeast Louisiana. Again, all modes of severe are possible. Uh, it's very difficult to say right now which one might be the greater threat over the other, but uh, expect all four uh, threats to be in play. And then the greatest threat, of course, perhaps is the damaging wind threat, mainly because we're dealing with a potent, strong uh, squall line that's dealing with a lot of winds that's just off the surface, and it wouldn't take much to bring it down to the surface to cause uh, wind damage. Uh, and, the, and the types of impacts could be like shingles and, and parts of roofs removed, uh, trees, weaker trees snapped, uh, and some maybe even brought down by the roots, and, uh, and myriad other kinds of uh, typical wind damage that you could expect from high wind events. Uh, and then that's on top of that, you do have the, the tornado event. So once again, the tornadoes can be very fast moving because the wind speeds that we're dealing with are going to be like interstate type speeds. So um, if we do put warnings out uh, that say Saturday morning, uh, we, we may have some speeds of these tornadoes, uh, you know, 50 to 70 miles per hour forward speeds. So with that, that means you're going to have to act very quickly to get into your safe, your safe spot. Uh, so prepare for that now. Think about your course of action, what you would take 
uh, should you come under a warning situation over the next day or so, next two days. So here's your timing slide, and right now we're looking at, once again, it'll be in West Louisiana, where they do have a moderate risk up there in the Shreveport area, that's where the bulk of the, the, the heaviest weather is going to be focused at initially. And that'll be tomorrow evening into the pre-dawn hours of uh, Saturday morning. And then it gets into our area more in earnest, say between 4 a.m. just before sunrise, Saturday morning through about noon. And then pushing east into uh, our eastern part of our area and starting to move out say between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. And the reason why the, the, the time slots you see here are about eight hours wide is because there is that uncertainty as far as the timing. Because uh, we're, we're right now, we are talking about something that hasn't even developed yet. Uh, it will start out in West Texas and Central Texas first once it does develop. Uh, that should take place tomorrow late morning, early afternoon. Once it does have something to latch on to. We start seeing our radar and satellite imagery. We can start timing these things out better. But for right now, it's probably just safe to give you a good eight hour window there where you can expect the worst to occur sometime within that window. Um, once again, from a safety standpoint, have multiple ways to receive your warnings, either NOAA weather radio or your phone. You uh, download one of the apps, uh, commercial apps that may be out there that you can use uh, or, you know, have a good close connections through social media using Facebook or Snapchat or, or what have you out there that's, that's available. Uh, Twitter is a good way of getting uh, words amongst your uh, closest connections. Uh, and then, of course, our website, you can always visit there and get the latest uh, updated watches and warnings on our web page as well. Uh, and by all means, also turn into your local uh, television and radio stations for their la latest information. Uh, also, have uh, make your plans now. Figure out where in your home or business is the safest place to be. Uh, and that way, if you do get a warning, you already have that figured out and you, you're not panicking at the moment and figuring, okay, what, now what do I do? I already have a plan in place tonight or, or, or early tomorrow morning. And that way, you're, you're prepared and ready to go and things just run a whole lot smoother when that's the case. Looking at the excessive rainfall, um, again, it's not so much a bigger issue for us locally, but just to put it in perspective for you, I, I decided to go ahead and show it that the, there is a, a large uh, area that's under a slight to moderate risk of excessive rainfall where flash flooding is more likely to occur. And once again, this will be over Oklahoma, eastern Oklahoma into Arkansas, a big chunk of the state of Arkansas look like they're in play and it goes into Missouri. Um, and, and not to say we're off the hook entirely, but you can see the, the worst of it will probably be further north and uh, some of localized flooding may still result from some of these storms, especially if you get in a situation where you get in some storms that uh, repeat themselves one, over the same area for a little bit of a while, say for about an hour or so. Uh, and then going into Saturday, that, that heavy rain threat, it, it shrinks an area for one thing and then it also, the greater folk focus pushes up into the uh, Midwest states up uh, towards the Great Lakes. So um, again, the threat seems a little bit less for the excessive rainfall, but uh, just just be mindful that there still could be some uh, flooding issues uh, that right now, which would be the lesser of the threats. So in summary, severe thunderstorms are possible Friday late night in the pre-dawn hours and going into Saturday and perhaps moving out of the area in the early afternoon hours Saturday. And once again, all modes of severe as possible, including severe tornadoes, long track, fast moving tornadoes. Uh, wind advisory will be in effect for Friday into Saturday morning. These are non thunderstorm winds. These are just the regular, uh, what we call the gradient wind uh, out ahead of the system uh, that are coming off the Gulf of Mexico. Coastal flood advisory is in effect because of these higher winds. Uh, they'll be piling the water up on the coast. And uh, as a result, you can get some low lying flooding uh, near the coast. Once again, from a safety perspective, have multiple ways to receive your warnings, stay in touch with your friends and family, and make sure everybody stays safe, and have a plan to do, know now what you want to do in the event a tornado or severe thunderstorm warning is issued for your immediate area. So plan to act quickly, because things will be moving fast once it does get going. Uh, that's all we have for this evening. We hope uh, you stay tuned and, and stay on top of the weather over the weekend, and um, we'll see you another time.